and welcome to X-Ray Review. In this video, we're going to go through some of the more common lung pathologies and how they look on radiographs. And uh, please don't forget to take a second and like and subscribe if you haven't. Let's take a look at this frontal view of the chest. You should see an abnormality within the left lung field. And this is a good example of an aggressive appearing radiographic lesion in the chest. Uh, there's no obvious evidence of calcification and it appears very large. And this ends up being a bronchogenic carcinoma. Bronchogenic carcinomas are one of the most common forms of lung cancer. So chest x-rays can be very helpful in distinguishing benign versus malignant lesions. One of the things we're looking for is, is there calcification or not? Approximately 99% of benign lesions demonstrate calcification and approximately 99% of malignant lesions do not present with any calcification. So a benign lesion in the chest, like this one in the right lung field, should appear smooth and well-defined, very stable in size over time, often is going to present with calcification, and typically smaller than 2 centimeters in size. Versus a malignant appearing lesion, which will have a more irregular shape, poorly defined, you can't quite tell where it is, where it is not, it can grow over time rapidly, rarely will have calcification, and can be larger, often over two centimeters in size, should be very suspicious. And anything involving the surrounding soft tissues is always going to have a more aggressive component. Just so you can get an idea of some of the more common causes and frequency of chest lesions, and we'll cover all of these here, are things like granulomas from granulomatous conditions like TB, uh, primary lung cancers, lung metastasis, uh, rarely benign tumors, and then other things like infectious abscesses or fungal infections. In this frontal view of the chest, you should see a very large, non-calcified, uh, poorly marginated lesion within the right hilar area of the chest. And this is an aggressive uh, or malignant lesion of the chest, like a bronchogenic carcinoma. This is a frontal view of the thoracic spine, and in the left hilar region of the chest, you should see a large area of increased density that demonstrates no evidence of calcification. And this ended up being proven by a CT scan to be bronchogenic carcinoma. And in this example, in the right hilar region of the chest, there is a large area of increased density with no evidence of calcification in this longtime smoker. And this was also um, path-proven bronchogenic carcinoma, which favors that right hilar region of the chest. In this example, you should see multiple areas of increased density scattered throughout both lung fields without obvious evidence of calcification. And anytime you see that, think pulmonary metastasis first. Pulmonary metastasis refers to the spread of cancer cells from a primary tumor in another part of the body to the lungs due to the high vascularization of the lungs. This is what pulmonary metastasis looks like on an x-ray. On this frontal view of the thoracic spine, you should see multiple areas of concern within the lung fields. As we zoom in closer, you should see there are very poorly defined borders on this lesion, no evidence of calcification, and it appears larger, over 2 centimeters, which is going to increase the suspicion for malignancy. Some of the more common cancers that metastasize to the lung fields on, and that are going to be seen on an x-ray are going to include things like breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and renal cell carcinoma, to name a few. Here's a good example of a lung pathology seen on a non-chest film. On this frontal view of the cervical spine, you should see a focal deviation of the tracheal air shadow to the left being pushed by this large space-occupying lesion within the right lung apex. 
and this ends up being an apical mass or a pancos tumor, which is an aggressive lesion within the chest. On this frontal cervical thoracic view, you should see a density within the right lung apex, and there is a space occupying lesion here, which ended up being um, a benign neurogenic tumor, also known as a neurofibroma or schwannoma. So there are a lot of different etiologies for apical pleural masses, with some of the malignant causes being pancos tumors or metastatic disease, uh, benign lesions, um, apical pleural thickening or apical capnine is very common, uh, but TB loves the right lung apex, and then of course other things like neurogenic tumors, uh, which I just showed you, or post-radiation fibrosis can also cause these apical pleural masses. So here is a frontal view of the thoracic spine and chest. And you'll notice in the right middle lung field, there is a large area of increased density, which represents a consolidation or a pleural effusion. A pleural effusion is a buildup of excess fluid in the pleural space, which is a thin space between the lungs and the chest wall. One of the most common causes for a pleural effusion is going to be a pneumonia. We all know a pneumonia as an infection of the lungs, and this can cause inflammation of the air sacs leading to fluid or pus accumulation. And the most common cause for a pneumonia is going to be bacterial from the Streptococcus pneumoniae uh, strain. Radiographically, we're looking for areas of increased opacity or whiteness in the lung fields, which may indicate pneumonia. And blunting of the costophrenic angle could be indicative of pleural effusion. It is not uncommon to see lobar consolidation, which is a well-defined, dense white area which respects the boundaries of the lobe. Sometimes it will appear as more of a patchy infiltrate, which is more diffuse, can be seen in viral or atypical pneumonia. Compare the scratchy, patchy appearance of the lung fields versus this normal chest radiograph. And one of the radiographic findings that's pathognomonic for pneumonia is an air bronchogram sign. And this is where you can see an air-filled bronchi visible against the background of the white lung consolidation. On this frontal view of the chest, you should see a very large calcified lesion in the left hilar region. Although this lesion is large, it is also calcified, and this is one of the rare benign uh, lesions in the chest called a pulmonary hemartoma. Uh, and these, uh, because of their size, often need to be confirmed on CT, uh, but they can vary in size and location and have this classic popcorn calcification presentation. But uh, this is a good example of a benign tumor of the chest. On this frontal view of the thoracic spine, we're looking at one of the more common lung pathologies seen on x-ray. So these multiple areas of soft tissue calcification are due to a previous exposure to a granulomatous disease, in this case, tuberculosis. So a granulomatous disease like tuberculosis is characterized by the formation of granulomas, which are these small areas of inflammation caused by the immune system attempting to isolate and contain the infections that it cannot eliminate. Radiographically, tuberculosis can vary significantly um, depending on the stage of disease. So with primary tuberculosis, we're looking for things like hilar lymphadenopathy, parenchymal infiltrates, pleural effusion, and then the characteristic GON focus. Reactivation or post-primary tuberculosis is known for the upper lobe infiltrates, large cavitary lesions, fibrotic changes, consolidation, and then of course pleural fusions. Miliary tuberculosis or disseminated tuberculosis, you can see these really tiny, small, uniform nodules scattered throughout the lung fields. Uh, these can be very, very subtle and easier to spot on CT.
And lastly is the post-tuberculosis or chronic sequelae, where you can see residual scarring, significant volume loss, and then other conditions such as um, bronchiectasis from chronic TB infection. Now this case is a little tricky. In the right hilar region of the chest, you should see a very large, what appears to be non-calcified lesion. So while this may look like some of the previous bronchogenic carcinomas we saw, this ends up being a case of histoplasmosis, which is a fungal infection. If you inhale these spores, uh, this fungus can grow inside the lungs. And uh, this is a good example of an aggressive form of histoplasmosis. So typically when you see histoplasmosis on a chest x-ray, it will appear very calcified. Uh, unlike the last example I just gave you, but it is radiographically uh, almost identical to tuberculosis. So it's hard to tell the two apart with just a chest x-ray alone. So moving on, let's take a look at this frontal view of the chest and you should see a very large cyst-like lesion within the left lower lung field that looks devoid of vascular markings. And this large cyst-like area of dead space is referred to as bolus emphysema, which is a form of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And with this bolus emphysema, you can see these large air-filled spaces in the lungs that result from the destruction of the alveolar walls. And this could lead to significant pulmonary issues. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a progressive lung disease that causes persistent airflow limitation and difficulty breathing, usually due to exposure to irritants like cigarette smoke or air pollution. On the frontal chest x-ray, we're looking for flattening of the hemidiaphragms, an overinflation of the lung fields, which can then cause a narrowing of the heart and mediastinum, and then visualization of all those air-filled bolas and cysts. On the lateral view, you can often see the increased A to P diameter of the chest called a barrel chest. And these are um, classically seen with patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is the third leading cause of death worldwide, with an estimated 392 million people globally having COPD. And since you're still here, let's look at a few more x-rays. Here are three examples of lytic metastasis from breast cancer spreading to the C4 vertebral body. You should notice a significant loss of bone density as well as a decrease in vertebral body height. This is the typical presentation of lytic destruction of a vertebral segment due to breast cancer metastasis. And thank you very much for making it this far. If you enjoyed, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And any questions or comments, please put them below. Thanks again.